Uh, so then King Friday the 12th dies. King Friday the 13th ascends to the throne, takes the title of king. Which is what they've been waiting for since King Friday the 1st. They're like, we gotta keep this going until we can complete it's the gonna joke. It's gonna be so funny. In, in, in until until he generations. becomes a horrible despot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. Well, it's another beautiful day in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It is a beautiful day in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And uh, it's another beautiful day on Please Won't You Be My Podcast. Well, it's a beautiful day in Please Won't You Be My Podcast. Maybe not another beautiful day. That's true. We're recording this immediately after episode four. Back to back. Because I'm out of the country. la di da The borders are finally open. Yeah. Borders are open. Um, I'm Steven. I'm Andrew. Uh, so let's get things started. Let's get things started. This is episode five. The last of the first week. The last of the first arc. Of regular Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The uh, the finale to the War on Changers. So we start this episode with Mr. Rogers on his porch playing yep. with a feather. Doing a low-budget Forrest Gump. Yep. It's, it's, it's a weird feather. It's like a three... For three prong. Three prong, real light, wispy feather. Mm-hmm. He says he found it on his way over. Yeah, and... That seems like a very exotic bird for his <laughs> suburban neighborhood. I was more distracted by the fact I remember pretty distinctly as a child when you would find a feather and play with it, your parents would be like, oh, that was on a disgusting bird. You need to wash your hands. Yeah, the implication... Parents are certainly of the opinion that a bird is the dirtiest animal known to man. Yeah, and so I was surprised that Mr. Rogers didn't have the same approach. What with his, uh, in a couple episodes ago, we had a plastic bag, and he's like, this is not for playing, you gotta throw this out. Yeah, safety I was ex- first. I was expecting a safety first for bug, no, or for bird this, germs. This is a feather, let's stick it under our watch. And then in our ear. And, and wear it on our, and on then, our arm. Yeah. Let's, he, he describes it as his friend for a little while, mm-hmm. um, and he also talks to it. Um, he talks to a lot of inanimate objects, I've begun to notice. Yeah. I wonder if the weird feather is because he's so close to the land of make-believe. Maybe. The bird just flew it, over. It maybe it's from the make-believe bird. makes it a beautiful metaphor. Birds recognize no borders. Mm-hmm. Why Why then should we? Uh, so we've got a lot of... The theme of this episode is floating things. Yeah. Uh, and so Mr. Rogers enters his house after being on the porch for a little while to find it... Uh, that there's a lot of balloons. Yeah, he opens up his uh, his like bench. Yeah, he's he's got a, one of those bench chest things. Yeah, yeah. He opens up the seat and a big old balloon floats out. And yeah, helium catches balloon it. Pops out. It's a good thing he caught it because later he loses it and it goes all the way up to the studio ceiling, which seems really high. Yeah, it seems like it's probably pretty high. And I'm not sure how uh, one take Rogers will <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> deal with that. Oh, let's go over. It's a yellow balloon. Yeah, he mentions uh, the color of a few tells things. Tells us, which is good to know because it's still black and white. So uh, we have his sweater. No idea. He, uh, oh, yes, his sweater's yellow too. He he holds that up and says yellow. Yeah. Uh, that, great. Good note. Good to know. Glad to hear it. I'm wondering now, Mr. Rogers just doesn't lock his doors. I mean, it's a friendly neighborhood. Yeah. But, like, people are just coming in and leaving balloons yeah, everywhere. Yeah, because we find out that the balloons were delivered by Mr. McFeely. Uh-huh. Um, Not a lot of respect for privacy. Daniel Tiger this. actually calls him up and says, oh, the balloons are there. Mr. McFeely delivered them. Yes. And it is... I mean, first of all, why does Daniel Tiger know and not Mr. McFeely? Why? I think that Daniel Tiger got them delivered to Mr. Rogers' so that house. So that Lady Averly could pick Averly them up. Could pick and them up. as a lo- lady and family of the king, smuggled them into the land of make Yeah, she could get them through you without just, question. You couldn't just deliver those directly. Because, no. I mean, the, we've seen the way this is going. King Friday's probably checking mail at this point. Yeah. I mean, but, he's already checking cakes 
and songs for True messages enough. of change. So. But Mr. McFeely is straight up breaking and entering. Yeah. And at this point. <laughs> later, uh, Lady Averlin or Betty Averlin just like shoves her face through the curtains. And yeah. I was like, you better hope that Mr. Rogers yeah. is not getting changed. Well, yeah. Averlin. So Dan- Daniel Tiger calls Mr. Rogers on the phone, which has now moved back to the back wall mm-hmm. after it's one day stint at the front of the house. Yeah. It's moved to the back, and he tells, he says he knows about the balloons, and, uh, well, there's a picture picture before that, yeah, we, where he and asks, it's a, he, picture picture does have full motion Yeah, it's a more too. traditional picture picture this time, uh, in that we watch a video and Mr. Rogers talks about it, but it's a boring video, it's not about it's a It's a really boring video just of, like, balloons Things and bubbles, that float. dandelion fluff, leaves on water. He does say, he doesn't say picture picture on the wall, would you... Kindly show us all things that float. He says what you think of when you think of floating things. Which gives Picture Picture a weird amount of agency in this whole thing. Yeah, it's just a word association. Yeah, so yeah, what do you think of? Picture Picture's got a real neural network. Yeah, Picture Picture knows knows what's up. He, him and Max from the community center. In, in, uh, in Mr. Mr. Dressup. Mr. Dressup, yeah. yeah. So uh, on the phone, Daniel Tiger tells Mr. Rogers that Lady Aberlin will be there in 14 seconds. Did did he say seconds? Because up until now they re- they haven't. No, really he, used yeah, he said he said 14 seconds. Okay, and and he said, well, if you just count to 14, or Mr. Rogers said, well, we'll just count to 14 and see if she really shows up in there. And then he continues to like chat, like he burns through probably 10 of those 14 seconds. Uh-huh. Just talking to Daniel Tiger and, you know, saying goodbye. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. But then he starts counting to 14, and sure enough... As soon as he gets to 14, Lady Everyone shoves her face through the curtains. Shoves her face through the window, startling Mr. Rogers. And then proceeds to want to climb through the window like a weirdo. Yeah, he invites her in, and then she tries to climb in the window. Which, honestly, that was a a good bit. Uh, So anyways, Lady Everyone comes to tell Mr. Rogers about uh, the... Peaceful protest that Daniel Tiger is instigating. Yeah. Um, I guess the balloons are so that they can float messages of peace over yeah. the castle wall and into King Friday's hands so that maybe yeah. he'll rethink all Which, of the uh, totalitarian if we're, governances. If we're going on the theory that these balloons were ordered by Daniel Tiger to Mr. Rogers' house for this plan, it doesn't explain why there are a number of balloons that are of no use to their plan because they're just full of air. Well, it, when she tells uh, Mr. Rogers about this plan, uh, she gets Mr. Rogers to uh, role play yeah. with her uh, the um, the plan in question, and so Mr. Rogers plays the role of uh, King Friday, which he does a so so job on the voice, yeah. surprisingly, which is which is pretty good. I'm always interested in when characters have to do impressions of other characters played, played by the same, same actor, people. yeah. And and I respect Mr. Rogers for not just doing and the so King Friday voice. Mostly, what they're testing is the uh, they're doing a proof of concept on the whole uh, floating helium balloons as a message delivery system. Message delivery system across a wall because it's like, well, will they just float up into the sky? Yeah. Will they fall down? And um, Lady Aberlin seems like she's. This is barely a plan. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I mean it. It's about what you'd expect to be thought up by like a by Daniel twelve tiger. inch tall tiger. Yeah, she's she's really sort of filling in the details as she goes. But uh, she lets one of these plan. go in in Mister Rogers' house, and Mister Rogers immediately snatches it because it's gonna go straight up to the ceiling. Yeah, because there's like five balloons to one message. So really, I, I don't think he's doing a great job of the role playing because he it's not gonna work in real life. No, and also he reads it and says, "Oh, peace. That's a good idea." And then she's like, oh, do you think that's really going to work? He's like, well, I hope so. I hope so, maybe. He's not doing the uh, the worst case scenario. No, no. It's a real 99 red balloons kind of plan. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, in explaining how this uh, plan came to be, she talks about how she's got a leave of absence uh, from her military service. Uh, and she talks about how last night when she was on guard duty, mm-hmm. Daniel Tiger came up to the barbed wire and, and they talked, and it, it just struck me as a surprisingly poignant image. Uh-huh. Daniel Tiger talking to Lady Averlin across the barbed wire at night yeah, in the land of make-believe. It's a real boy in striped pajamas kind of thing. Uh, what? It's a movie about concentration camps. Oh, okay. The perfect thing you want to mention on your fun Mr. Rogers podcast. Mm. 
Uh, oh, and uh, while they were role playing this uh, peaceful protest, Lady Averlin says, "Okay, you go over there, and we'll make believe that's the castle." And I was like, "No, don't! <laughs> it might work. It might work. Yeah." I mean, this whole world is based on make believe. Yeah, it's, it's it's it remains a confusing situation. Um, and then, as she's leaving for the land of make believe, they're sort of walking right. at the door. Mister Rogers is showing her out, and he says, oh, "I'd better call you Lady Averlin." He'd been calling her Betty Averlin up to this point, so I guess he doesn't respect the title outside <laughs> he of the land of make the believe. Monarchy, yeah, so I guess her ladyship is not valid. In the United States, but we established, I thought yesterday, that Mr. Rogers seemed to fall under the king's rule. So maybe he's, I'm wondering now if he's like a foreign national, like he's an expat from the land of make believe. Maybe. So he's still a citizen of the land of make believe, but he's living in the neighborhood. How's about we go to the land of make believe? Let's go to the land of make believe. All right. Um, doesn't seem to be, uh, I mean, do we still have to do the name, rank, serial number, and key? Punch. I didn't see the clock cards. Yeah, that's true. That that didn't pan out. That lasted no amount Grand of time. Grand Pair must have punched them all out of the sky. <laughs> yeah. Grand Pair fighting the power. Good for him. Good for him. Well, here we are in the here land of make-believe. we are in the land of make-believe. And we start... Yeah, we start um, at the castle with uh, King Friday and Joe Negri and Edgar. At one point, King Friday... They do some salute stuff. King yeah. Friday is addressing the troops. Um, and then, so, Joe Negri does a salute, and then a salute with his other hand, and oh, yeah. then a salute with the, the first King hand. King Friday again. requests that he does a, a right hand salute, and then he says, now do a right, left, right, one, two, three, real yeah. quick, like, just yeah. messing with his King troops. Friday loves getting saluted. Mm -hmm. um, and then he gets Edgar to do it, and Edgar tries Edgar to do it. Edgar tries to do it, but the, uh... Has a lot of trouble because he's a hand puppet. Yeah, the Pinky and Thumpkin don't work so well on Edgar's, uh, saluting. Yeah, so he tries to salute, and, and Joe Negri's very encouraging. He said, well, you did a pretty good job. And King Friday sort of reprimands him and says, try, try to do it better. And I feel like he uses his full name, and it sounded like his name was Edgar Took. Okay. Or Took. So, I think it was, yeah. I don't know. I have Edgar Took written down a any relation with to a question mark. Per Peregrine Took? Maybe he's a hobbit. That would explain some things and not other things. <laughs> I was going to say, it wouldn't fully explain everything, no. would it? Uh, no. He also has a tiny cannon. Uh, I didn't see the tiny cannon. He has a tiny cannon in front of him. It's the other side of the barbed wire, so okay. hard to operate. But Well, because the plan is, if anything suspicious happens, his troops, which consist of two people, Lady Averlin's still on leave. Yes, if, um, if, anything, uh, if anything shifty happens, they were instructed to kindly fire a shot. <laughs> which I didn't see the... Uh, I didn't see the uh, the cannon there, so I figured it was just fire a gun up into the air. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, later. I saw the cannon. Like okay. willy nilly. So they fire a shot with the cannon, and then they the cannon is just to to group them up. Yeah, it's more of an intercom yeah. than a. There's also weapon. I didn't notice it before, so I'm not sure if it's a radar dish or just like a TV antenna on top of the castle. He's got to get his shows. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's if it's related to the military. The increased militarization of the land of make believe, or if it's just a fun mm -hmm. anachronism, a castle with an antenna. Uh, so the scene shifts over to the tree, over to where the tree. Uh, Daniel Tiger has uh, made his way over to X the Owl's tree and is informing him of his plan for peaceful his protest. Plan for peaceful, pro yeah. And they talk about how they they kind of enjoy the change. X talks about a change that he did one time where he moved his bed to the other wall. Mm -hmm. um, and it is revealed in this point that his bedroom is down in the roots, which I thought added an uncomfortable layer to his offer a few episodes earlier that, that Henrietta could come over and stay in his roots if, if she got scared. Well, that's where she is. That's where she is, yeah. He he says it's that. It's revealed. Because uh, Lady Aberlin comes and asks if uh, Henrietta wants to come with them to this protest. Uh, and X says that Henrietta's too scared and she's Yeah, so I'm not sure if X the Owl is maybe taking advantage of the situation. Or... Who knows? I don't know. I feel like you might have a thing for Henrietta Pussycat. I mean, I would say they're definitely a They're, they're definitely, definitely a couple. Item. I don't know yeah. if they're a couple. I feel like he wants them to be a couple. Mm. And she's... She's off in her own little headspace. <laughs> she lives in a schoolhouse. 
Yeah. Does she live in a schoolhouse? Yeah, Henrietta Schoolhouse. They referred to it as oh, that okay. like three times. Oh, what, is that the same schoolhouse that I remember seeing in later episodes from my childhood? Or is that no, I think that was in the Platypus Mound is the other schoolhouse, but I could Maybe. be wrong. I guess hopefully we'll find out. Yeah. Um, I, it all sort of blurs together. Yeah. So yeah, X the Owl is hosting this meeting of the resistance, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they're talking like nobody really cares, but I feel like they should care a little. Yeah. Like the invasion of uh, privacy is privacy of rearranging every part yeah. of the town seems significant. Well, they're talking. Daniel Tiger makes I feel a revealing slip mm-hmm. here, where they're they're talking about his plan. Is like you think it'll work? He's like I don't know if it'll work. And Daniel Tiger says uh, sometimes you try something, and he, what he means to say is it doesn't always work right. Mm-hmm. But what he actually says is it always doesn't work right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, poor Daniel Tiger. Nothing he does works. <laughs> yeah, poor. Poor, poor sad Daniel Tiger. So Lady Aberlin shows up with the balloons, uh, some of which are more helium than others, I think. <laughs> yeah, seems like. And she's written all sorts of various peace, peace, slogans. love, peaceful coexistence. Yeah. Uh, tenderness is on one of them. Yeah, all sorts of stuff there. And um, then they take those over to uh, Corn, Cornflake S. Yeah. Especially. More puppets than we've ever seen in one place. Yeah, in this when uh, when they ask if uh, Henrietta wants to come over to join the protest and uh, X says that, no, she's too scared. I was like, well, she's too scared and you don't have enough hands, yeah. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> she's too scared and Fred Rogers only has two hands. Uh, but then later at the... At, uh, Corny's factory, we yeah. see that there are three puppets. So. Yeah, Corny's just sort of leaning up against the the side of his thing. And at first I thought that they just had the puppet propped up there and Mr. Rogers snuck his hand now in there. No, they just got a lazy puppeteer. No, they've just got probably three or four puppeteers. Probably Joe Negri. Maybe just two um, mm. on the go on the go in this episode. And talking about how um, how bad this this period of, not war exactly, has been um, X the Owl says he feels like there's a fence between him and the castle. And and I'm like, there, yeah, there, there is. literally is a fence, buddy. He hasn't, he hasn't if, left the. I don't know if you've been over there. He hasn't left his yeah. uh, his tree because he's had to punch a time clock yeah. card. Also, Daniel Tiger's commitment to the resistance is not so much that he doesn't want to play with the balloons a little bit before they <laughs> use them. Yeah, and X the Owl actually says, "I'd better be careful. I don't poke them with my beak. I wouldn't want to break one." And then he says, "Let me try, anyways, though." <laughs> And he, he bops at them with his beak a bit. Yeah, that was good. And they don't pop because he has a very blunt beak. So they launch off the balloons. From the castle. And by launch off, it sort of means... Huck. Huck. And then it falls immediately. And so then she's like... Yeah. Playing they, keep it in the air. Which which is probably for the best. Because I'm like, they're going to let these balloons go. They're just going to float away. But oh, yeah. Totally. That's what they were doing. In, yeah. In, uh, but they're pretty heavy cards relative to the balloons. I yeah. guess it doesn't take much to pull a helium balloon down. No. Um... And so a bunch of, uh, in fact, the shot of the balloons getting blown into the castle opens with a balloon pretty much entirely obscuring the camera. Yeah, and lots of them kind of fall short. Yeah, and um, are and are bounced over again by various production staff. But uh, King Friday sees this and assumes that it's paratroopers. Yeah, right. Come to come come to storm his castle. So the cannon starts firing off. There's a cannon sound effect. Yeah. Um, and the, the troops assemble and, uh, and seem, seem pretty ready to, I guess, go to war. <laughs> yeah, they Lady Elaine just comes over and explains what they were trying to accomplish here. Yeah. I, like all great like, modern oh, art. Yeah, this, uh, this, this didn't, work, didn't at work at all. Let me just explain what no, we were going for. No, here. look, it says peace on this balloon and King Friday basically immediately takes It's that. like we were trying to send him over the wall, but now I see I could just come over here and tell you what, it, yeah. <laughs> what our message is. Yeah. It's like oh the peace. art the art well, side of this nice. sort of fell short so I'm just going to give you the uh <laughs> give you the breakdown. Yeah. There's a commentary on satire or something in mm-hmm. there. And and even I think more than the message of peace all the commotion caused by the balloons uh brings brings Lady Elaine Fairchild out of the woodwork. Oh yeah, and she's like, "Oh, what's going on?" As far as I can tell, she just so she's just been sleeping. She's sleeping in the castle in the basement of the castle all week. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's got a found her. She's got a very small role in this episode, Lady yeah. Elaine Fairchild, but she, I think she pulls it off pretty she well. She has a small role, but it's a great one. She's like, is all this commotion because of me? And they're like, yes. Yeah. She's like, oh, good. 
Oh, good. I'm glad I caused all of this excitement. Excitement's great. Um, Seeing her for the first time and in such sharp profile, I didn't realize how very witchy she looks. Yeah, she's... uh, But she is... She's straight up a witch. Yep. Um, And uh, King Friday says, oh, we gotta take you in for questioning. This is all your fault. I don't think she even says take you in for questioning. He's like, we gotta have a talk. Oh, yeah. So I think they're gonna hash it out. They go inside to hash it out. Oh, and uh, Lady Elaine Fair- Fairchild says, uh, toot toot, wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lady Elaine Fairchild's the best. She's like, well, you know, I gotta deal with the repercussions of my actions, but here we go. She, she, I hated her so much as a child uh-huh. because she was terrifying, and now I adore her. Pretty great. Yeah. Um... So, how do you think things went? They never show us the uh, yeah. We don't see conversation the between. conversation that they have. I mean, yeah, we never we never do find out. That why. was what I was really looking forward to was seeing this. Yeah, these, this this meeting of the minds. Yeah, see their uh, their different views on the world, but heads. Yeah, yeah, they really, and we never find out why Lady Elaine Fairchild decided to rearrange the neighborhood. Well, she sort of says, "Oh, I like excitement." Yeah, that's true. I think she was just she just wanted to stir stuff up, mm-hmm. and she succeeded. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think what she really was trying to do, and if so, she succeeded. Uh, she wanted to reveal King Friday for his true colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe teach him a lesson, but I feel like teaching him a lesson is secondary. Yeah. To Lady Elaine Fairchild. So maybe at this point, uh, I'd like to ask you um, how you feel about this uh, this approach on the part of King Friday. Where uh, where would you say the line should have been drawn that he went too far? Um, like I would say, I would say that rearranging the town is uh, is something that a uh, ruler should do something about. I suppose, yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering where he crossed the line. I feel like I feel like questioning everybody who came anywhere uh-huh. is probably. I feel like right from the jump he probably went too far. <laughs> Name ranking serial number was a bit much. Although immediately kind of... putting on the helmet was probably a bad first step. Mm, yeah, like he he absolutely escalated the situation. I mean, it's one thing to like, oh, we got to find Lady Lane Fairchild, which is sort of where it was at at the end of the first episode. Yeah, um, but in the intervening. 24 hours between the first episode and the second episode. Yeah, he sort of inflated he the, it up. He inflated it in his mind. Especially since she was apparently just in the castle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lying down. And no clue, no idea what's been going on this week. So as, as far as I can tell, literally just sleeping. Unconscious for... Yeah. I, I mean, just having when you a rearrange all of the major landmarks in a town, it takes it out I of you. I bet it does. You gotta it's hibernate. probably a lot. Hibernate for four Her or five days. Her hair is, I feel, even more frazzled than usual. I think that's just the old puppet. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to take care of in the I land of make-believe? Now that it's a peaceful, they feel like taking down the uh, barbed wire. Yeah, which is I nice. mean, it's, it's free and clear. Mm-hmm. The borders have opened right up. I mean, they didn't really ask King Friday... Whether, whether he was ready to take down the barbed wire, they're just like, this seems to have no. resolved itself. Actually, I wrote down the barbed wire is useless, and I was trying to figure out why, and now I realize it's because after the commotion and stuff, uh, Daniel Tiger and X the Owl show up. I mean, they just show up in the castle, when mm-hmm. we don't see how they got in, but they had no difficulty getting in. I mean, a puppet could go anywhere as long as I they... I mean, they've got all that barbed wire along the wall, but nobody ever tries to go over the wall. No. No, that's not how anybody gets into the castle. I it's don't just know. it's just there to prevent roughhousing. Yeah, you won't roughhouse when clearly there's... Clearly no guard at the door. Yeah, it's just to keep pigeons from landing on it, really. <laughs> yeah. He has all the security of the of the roof of the Safeway. Um, so let's go back to the real world. Let's go back to the real world. It's nice to be rid of all that uh, high security yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's... I, I feel like the future is set, and tomorrow will be a more beautiful day in this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I think so too. I think so too. It's a uh, it's a very uplifting message. Yeah, it is. Get it? Jokes about oh, floating. That's funny. They were uplifting messages over. All right. Well, we're here. We're here. What happened in the last section? I have no memory of it. Um, Mr. Rogers says like, "Oh, that was good. Yeah, was great. That resolved itself. Yeah, super. The end. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. Um." I think that's... And then uh, he sings a prayer. Oh, yeah, again. right. He sings Good Night, God. And he's like... Which oh. is 
less atheistic than it might sound from <laughs> first blush. Yeah, no, he, he sings a <laughs> prayer at the end of the episode. He says, this is what we sing in our house before we go to bed. He says, not everybody sings this song. Just, yeah. uh, just opening that. Uh, he's, he's, he's being a, as gentle as he can be, I think. While still while singing still, a prayer on public still television. still singing a prayer. Yeah, on public television. Exactly. Um, so that was very sweet. It was, it was very a nice yeah. uh, close. Not to, a ton in the back half of this. Ad. It feels, I don't know if it was an actually longer section in the land of make-believe. It had the pacing of, uh, like, you'd think they didn't know there were only five. It was almost like they were expecting a sixth day in the week. Everything sort of wrapped up very, very immediately. Mm -hmm. Somebody looked at the clock and said, oh, we got to be done now. Because there's no hands on this clock. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, not a lot happens. He uh, He's still got, like, the feather and the balloon attached to him from earlier, I think. No, the balloons floated away to the ceiling. Oh, right. He's maybe, still got the feather, though. Yeah, he's still got the feather. I assume. He doesn't really address it. I think he talks about it. Um, I don't know if he'd fixed his mic at that point or not. I don't remember. Earlier, he was showing how quiet feathers are, and he's like, be quiet, and listen how quiet floating things are. And he'd lift it up, and he'd drop it. But it was sort of undercut by the fact that his mic was in the wrong place, and his sweater was rumbling up against it constantly. Oh. I so, see. every time, he, it was actually a very loud-seeming feather. Yeah, he uh, he makes a remark like, "Oh, who would have thought that uh, that floating things, the theme of our episode, would save the day?" Yeah, it's like, well, the last episode we had a dog, and that didn't have anything to do with anything. <laughs> yeah, we saved some song and ended up seeing gestures. <laughs> yeah, um, so that wraps us up for the first uh, serialized yeah the section first, the first week. Of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and because we're not doing all 900 episodes... We're going to skip ahead uh, to 1971. Yeah, to the first... It's going to be a color episode. We're doing episode... Only the... 1176. 1176. I don't know what that number refers to, but that's what they call it. Yeah, we're skipping from 1969... Or 68, I think. Like uh, four, to, four years to 1971. forward. 1971. And this will be... Uh, volume one episode six on amazon's collection yep we'll see what has changed in four years yeah we'll have to sort of catch up on on the in-depth canon i'm hoping for a lady elaine fairchild episode i'm hoping we got a lot of lady elaine fairchild she uh, was really missing in this one and her voice seemed weird uh maybe i felt like she wasn't quite there yet at first, I wasn't sure if it was Fred Rogers doing the voice, but it was. He's still the only puppeteer on the show. Yes. But maybe he won't be when we come back in the far-off, distant future year of 1971. Our theme song... Our theme song... ...was provided by Dan Brisbane, and our trolley transition tune was made by Rindale. We're on iTunes. Review us on iTunes. Positively. If you don't have anything nice to type, don't... Type, type anything, anything ever again. Yeah. I was saying that as a joke, but it's a good rule. If you don't have anything nice to type, never type again. Yeah. <laughs> We've just fixed the internet. Um, We've got a Facebook page, too. Yeah. Yeah. We're sort of slowly building up a uh, infrastructure of where to find stuff. Sure. We're also just on Twitter at Andrew J. Plant and at Stephen J. Plant. That's right. So, like, if you're looking for something, we're not that popular. You could just send us a tweet and we'll tell you where it is. Sure. Yeah. Ideally podcast related, but I mean, I'll take I'll take other inquiries also. If you're curious about something, send it to me and maybe I'll look it up for you. Andrew wants friends. That's what he's asking for. I'm so lonely. He, he wants you to be his neighbor. Yeah. Please won't you be my neighbor. And please won't you be our podcast. We'll be back when the week is new. And I'll have more ideas for you. Uh, I know I'll have things to talk about. I will too. Great. Let's make the most of this beautiful day Since we're together we might as well say Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my podcast? Well, it's all your fault, Lady Elaine. You mean all this excitement is my fault? That's what I mean. Well, I'm delighted. Now, what is going on? 
Well, it's been a war against change. Yes. And I shall have a meeting with you inside immediately. Oh, dear. Well, toot toot, everybody. Wish me luck. <laughs> You'll need it, Lady Fairchild. Come in. 